what is up trail trash friends hey we are sitting here among elite company today we have matt daniels and seth ruling and i say elite because uh i dream of the paces that these guys can throw down uh and it's, it's very much a dream so i there's no way matt with you being a sub four minute miler i just couldn't even dream of getting the leg turnover required for that and then seth just watching you throw down all these times they're just like good lord these guys are cooking uh so thanks for hanging out with us tonight before we get started um i'm kind of looking at and matt the only reason i'm kind of doing this is because you and i shared a race and i got to see you pass by me twice uh and it was black canyon in 2019 and yeah. That was kind of a coming out party for you, I feel like, because no one really knew who you were. So that was the year that they kind of did a little reroute. And where the finish line was, was almost essentially the halfway point with how all that happened. And so you had already finished by the time I got to the halfway point. So when I say you were throwing down some wicked times, like that's how. And so I'm looking at the volunteers and like, you know, there's this guy sitting here. I'm like, who's that? And like, oh, that's the winner. I'm like, oh, <laughs> Who's that? And the guy looks at me and he's like, I don't know, Daniel Matthews or something like that. Like, so, <laughs> like, so that was a real coming name. out party. So, uh, and then Mako came right there. So yeah, small world. And now here we are. Now you're talking to me, uh, a back of the Packer. So, Hey, appreciate you guys coming on. So how are you guys doing? Oh man. Yeah. Doing, doing well. Thanks for, uh, thanks for having us. Like, uh, like I was saying earlier, Seth and I wanted to be kind of, uh, together for this recording but we had a, a big snore snowstorm just uh, roll through here like literally two hours ago and so uh yeah we're recording from different places here but stoked to be be here and uh catch up with you guys yeah yeah seth you doing yeah. all right yeah doing good yeah thanks for having us on yeah i was too uh too much of a weenie to drive in the drive in the snow so uh, just just pull a rocky four here throw. Yeah, throw some chains on the tires and drive on over. I know, you know I know. You know and then... hold, hold on one minute. You 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 know what? He can leave Tennessee, but you can't take the Tennessee out of him because we all know <laughs> that there ain't a damn soul between Garrett and John and myself that can freaking drive. And well, probably John because he's got a nice truck. But I drive a minivan, and and uh, Garrett has a family wagon as well of some sort. Uh, it, I yeah. don't know we, that uh, that the shagging wagon's pretty scrappy. I put my <laughs> money on it. <laughs> but 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 I, and and all, I mean seriously though, man, it, when it snows in Tennessee, and Seth can can it can account for this, it is the whole freaking state shuts down. Like if we get a dusting, like there, it's like don't go. The the there's no milk, there's no bread at the grocery store. Am I wrong, John? John's laughing. No, that's that's totally true. I remember that. I mean, moving to Colorado, I was like kind of bummed out because we'd get like <laughs> feet of snow and the roads are kind of still garbage because I don't know, Boulder County doesn't plow. And but but things stay um, open. So <laughs> things stay open and you're like, oh, I still gotta like go do stuff. Like it sucks. Right. Still gotta go to work. Damn. Yeah. No. Yeah. Um, hey, and so you guys started the Boulder Boys, and I was listening to an episode, and I think I can one-up you guys on something that you talked about. Y'all talked about trashy motels. Um, mm. and, <laughs> <laughs> and so I used to do a lot of softball umpiring across the, the Midwest, down into the South, and I've stayed at some trashy places. And this one's very similar to one, Matt, that you stayed in. When we walked in on the first floor the floor sunk with every step there was no like the water was cold if it turned on at all and the beds like yours were kind of sunk into the middle no. um dude it was the craziest place i have ever been we called the tournament director and we're like dude there's no way we're staying here he goes i'd put my family there i said great let's switch houses for the night then you come here <laughs> you know, and thankfully i had a college friend that lived down the road I was like dude i'm coming to crash on your couch because uh, I'm not falling through into a sinkhole tonight. So, um, yeah. And so back to to Boulder Boys, how did that all come about? First off, you guys have an absolutely fantastic show. I love everything that you guys are doing. The camaraderie that you have really comes through whatever it is you're listening to, car speakers, AirPods, whatever it is. Uh, how do you guys capture that? How did that all come about? Uh, I mean, like us as like a group, I don't actually know how I can't really remember how we all got connected and it kind of became like us 
four originally um of just like dudes running together like i can't quite remember how like because i knew I, I met drew first he was like the first person i met in boulder and i think adam knew matt really well and then adam knew drew so so there's like some connection we started running together um and then it was like we weren't really calling ourselves anything and i think we'd be like oh yeah we're gonna go run with the boys you know like it's you know, i'm just gonna like run with the boys it's like something we tell our like spouses or whatever like um and then i think matt you got on a podcast and, yeah and you 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 title it because we had like joked around like oh yeah we're the boulder boys and then like you got on a podcast and was like yeah we got a good training group the boulder boys and then like all of a sudden it was like uh kind of everyone was like, calling us. <laughs> yeah we were it was like a thing like and this is i don't know early last year maybe um but yeah and then i guess to the podcast like we we just like chat about things on runs like every time we we go for a run we like have pretty good and interesting conversations about the sport and sometimes like not the sport but usually like stuff we talk about I'm like always like man like this seems like if I was a fan of the sport I would want to listen in and I think uh we we're just kind of like yeah we should start a start a podcast it's kind of how our started here too uh Jason and I one day we were just kind of messaging off the side so we have a group chat that we're all in mm -hmm. and I was like, Jason, I think I'm gonna start a podcast. And he's like, Man, I've been thinking about doing that too. I said, Well, let's just get the boys together. Let's let's get it going and let's rock and roll. And then next thing you know, here we are. Sixty yeah. I think you guys are episode sixty nine, I think is what it's sixty eight or sixty nine, one of those two. Oh wow. Um, well, so I, I hope we're <laughs> <laughs> I hope we're episode sixty nine. That's funny. Well, I can I can rearrange and make that happen if that's what yeah, you guys let's, let's do that. <laughs> No, well, we're, the, we're the, adults the, here. I promise. The, 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 the funny thing was I had had a show by myself that I had did for about a year that was just YouTube only. Okay. Um, and it was, and I ended up moving it to podcast when I talked to Ryan Pluckelman, who does the adventure jogger. But back then it was the other show that he did that we, we don't talk about anymore, but, um, and so I did one and then like, I just, it's so hard when you do one by yourself, when it's just like all on you to like, you know, get the guests to edit the video, to edit the audio and like do it all by yourself. And so the great thing is like, when you have a team of us, all of us manage something different. So John does a lot of the like social media for us. Garrett does the audio. I do the video. And so like, it's it just makes it a lot easier than it's all on one person plus we just like talking to like a bunch of shit to each other and so it's yeah. just a lot easier when we can just do it all together like in an open forum so yeah 100 percent. yeah that's it that's impressive because uh i we started this podcast and it's been like Seth doing everything. This is kind of his baby. <laughs> yeah. We show up with the beers and have conversation. And then Seth, like, will do all the editing and, like, you know, posting and all that good stuff. Moy, Moy he's very talented in it. He's the one who makes the reels before it comes out. So you have something fun to, to watch and everything. But yeah, it, it's so funny because, uh, like, when we began this podcast, we, we were all joking, like, this is going to be probably like, a one and done or maybe like once every like like once a month maybe and like probably nobody's gonna listen to it because nobody really cares about what we're doing <laughs> the feedback was incredible and so yeah here we are now trying to pop something out every week it's been pretty cool yeah yeah it, it was it was crazy like i mean well I, I will say like we don't have video and the social media is very minimal so all i kind of do is edit the sound which i've been struggling with the freaking mixer lately um but uh yeah we like i don't know we like our, our first episode we were like super like i think we were like oh yeah we'll be so stoked if we have like 300 listeners in a, in a week or something like this mm -hmm. and then i don't know it was like 300 in like a few hours or something and we we're like <laughs> okay like this is cool like uh so uh now it's just kind of like it, it it's like take it's like taking off in that like we're pretty motivated to like keep 
recording because it's something that we get like we enjoy and then also people listening keep kind of giving us feedback of like it's kind of fun to engage that way because I think like otherwise we're just like training like other than racing it's like it's hard I don't know Matt probably feels the same way like it's really hard to engage with fans like outside of racing Mm -hmm. um or like being at events and you're just kind of like sometimes like months at a time just like training and kind of like not really engaging with the the fan base or the, or the the trail running community and then so now this podcast is like almost like a weekly way to engage and it's been kind of it's been kind of fun well and your voice memos are a great way to yeah encourage that engagement as well and i didn't yeah that was something that's really cool that i was like man kind of wish i thought of that before them because now i can't do that so <laughs> you can you can you can take that idea too yeah the voice yeah. memos are, are cool you know uh yeah. we didn't i didn't think it'd, it'd be as popular as it is well and you guys have an interesting perspective because you're elite athletes like you guys are the cream of the crop when it comes to this sport like you guys are front and center and don't take this wrong way, but if someone sees your name on a race list or a race entry list, they're probably more likely to sign up because they're going to get the chance to run mm -hmm. with you. They're going to get the chance to see you guys there. Um, uh, one, thing, us, uh, one thing I appreciate about that perspective, too, is when we talk about things like, you know, the state of UTMB, um, obviously for Garrett or Jason or me, it's nothing up our backs to skip UTMB. I mean, shoot, we're probably never going to go run there ever, but um you know it's interesting to hear you talk about you know reasons why you would still go run it um and things like that yeah yeah it is it is interesting to have that kind of different perspective i mean it's yeah trail running strain i mean it's definitely different than i'd say even different than like road running or track running is like we are pros and elites but like we're in the same race, which is like the same as marathoning, but we're also just kind of like for the most part uh, under that same umbrella with everybody. So it is like, mm -hmm. we're in the same race. We're in the same event, like UTMB or whatever, almost in the same capacity and as literally everybody else on the start line. But like, we maybe have a slightly different opinion on the, like why we're there. And that's like, sometimes like without the pot, like without, explaining that it's like hard to get that like to help have somebody understand that and yeah it's fun like for for a lot of reasons but also it's like yeah i don't know it's just a good time i don't know like i don't know matt matt's been like popping off at races lately though so <laughs> yeah there's not much interaction for matt because the only person that he's up there is with first second and third so yeah 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 <laughs> Yeah. Well, that was only only recently. I mean, I've had a rough few years where I've been uh, been hanging out with the mid middle of the pack more often. But uh, yeah, I think you know to to your point is like when we started this podcast, we one thing we wanted to do was like be very authentic. Uh, I think what happens a lot of times is professional athletes will get on on somebody else's podcast or be interviewed or something, and um, they they'd be very careful about like kind of what they say. You know, you're kind of like talking to a certain type of crowd and you're trying to please certain people and please the sponsors and this and that. And I think having our own podcast and our own platform kind of just, we made the decision, like, we're just going to be real and talk about things in a, in a real way, you know, to, to what we can without losing our contracts and that sort of thing, but, <laughs> like, you know, be very, um, be very open about where things are in this sport. Like um, at a professional level, it may seem or from like a middle of the pack runner or somebody who does this as a hobby, professional running may seem one way. And then, um, you know, in reality, like it can be completely different than what people are seeing or expecting. And I think it's, it's kind of cool to kind of get some of that information out there. So people know like what's really going on at the end of the day, we're all doing the same thing. We're just lining up on a start line, running from one point, finishing at another point and go home and feel like shit for 24 hours. So yeah. I think right. it's kind of right. like, uh, you know, try and get that point across a little bit and then talk about some other things that maybe aren't um, as, as taboo. So, so speaking of, you, oh, you, ahead, hold on real, real, hold on real quick. The common folk takes a little bit longer than 24 hours to recover. Uh, <laughs> you know, maybe, maybe, maybe those of you who have the, 
you know, the nights or something, but us common folk that live in the village, you know, it takes us a little bit longer than the old 24 hours to recover. Especially when you get, <laughs> especially, when you get especially when you get north of 40, buddy, okay? Uh, <laughs> yeah, you, know, I'm getting there. <laughs> you know, shit quit, quits working fast, okay? <laughs> well, he is closer to 50, Matt, than you and I are closer to 40. So, well, yeah, okay, okay. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he is the boomer in our group and we like mm. to remind him of that uh every chance we can so um so speaking of pro running there yep. you guys kind of talked about it with utmb and and seth your experience with iron man and kind of having those i don't having those entries that you guys are kind of struggling with with an, and i think it was canyons that you mentioned where do you guys kind of see professional trail running going from here with all this money that's coming in from UTMB and Ironman kind of with UTMB and, and doing all that and pumping all this money in Lululemon with their further event, which was absolutely fantastic uh, is certainly going to bring more women into the sport, which is what everybody wants. I would think um, which is going to bring more money and all those things. Where do you guys see trail and ultra running mm -hmm. on the pro side going in the next, let's just say short term in the next couple of years. Yeah. yeah, I think I mean, yeah. Matt, answer first. Yeah, yeah. it's interesting because there's quote unquote money coming in, but um, nobody's seeing it except for the organizers. Um, prize money hasn't changed. Uh, we're still paying full entry fees to get in if we are lucky enough to get in. Um, now, things like the Lululemon event are pretty cool, where a select number of athletes are getting getting sponsorships that maybe they wouldn't have gotten, and pretty good sponsorships for that, and then. Um, but that's just kind of a one-off thing where they're dumping millions of dollars into this event. And then I'm not sure what, what the track of those athletes is going to look like from now moving forward. But, um, I do think as more money comes in, um, contracts will get bigger races will be like certain races will become more kind of mainstream, sort of like what happened, I think with triathlon probably in the the 90s going in uh i could be totally wrong on the date seth you're the triathlon guy but in the 90s going into the early 2000s where it got way more professionalized um you still have these grassroots triathlon races that plenty of people go to but you know everything is showcased around the iron man events and i i think as long as iron man's um and is partnering with utmb and utmb is looking to make a ton of money then that's i think the direction that professional running is going to go and if that's the case then they're going to have to start paying athletes a lot more than they're paying now or else nobody's going to start showing up at these events uh or keep doing these events like the only reason for us to go to these events right now is because it's it's in our contracts and by doing well at one of these events it can possibly get us a better contract and when i'm talking about a better contract it's like um instead of making somebody making ten thousand dollars a year maybe they do well enough and now all of a sudden they're on a thirty thousand dollar a year contract or the difference between somebody like jim and these are just random numbers the difference between like jim winning and jim getting fifth is something like the difference between a hundred thousand and three hundred thousand but that's the top one percent of of athletes and so um i would think that over the next few years with you know more money going in and more people doing these races that hopefully it trickles down to the athletes in the sport becomes a little bit more professionalized, but I don't, I, at the same time, don't see the grassroots side of things changing much. I think there's still a, a huge need for it. And there's plenty of races and plenty of people getting into the sport for, for the right reasons um, that enjoy that, those kind of events. I mean, I love, I love those kind of events. I'm any chance I get, I'm finding those races to run them. And then of course uh, I like to go to big competitions where, where a lot of people are at. And so sometimes that, that brings me to like, the canyons or utmb type races but um yeah I, I think that there's probably going to be a little bit of a shift but it's like we're like athletes are going to have to start seeing some of the money before um like we start to see like an overarching change yeah so, yeah I, so so I, I have a quick question real fast and seth you might be able to answer it too yeah. i know you're about to talk and i'm sorry to interrupt you but no, no, no. Uh, so jim and so like you said top one percent so but like like the gym and Courtney's would they be like the top consider like the top 1% of like the sponsor type elites would that be the type of athletes we're talking about here yep yeah like the the gyms yeah. the Courtney's the Prince Walls you know Killian you know there's it, it's it's really sad the disparity between the men and women right now but 
it's sure. the truth. Um, but yeah, that that's what I'm talking about. The guys who have won this race multiple times or um yeah, have been with the brand when they when when trail running started growing, they like hit it at the right time too. That's that's the thing is timing. Yeah. It's huge. It's huge. It's crazy. Um there's guys that hit it just just at the right time and are making good money and then guys who are running just as good now that it, you know they're not seeing a dime so it, it's kind of sad yeah because because the like the sport it's mainly like the athletes are compensated almost entirely right now by sponsors and sponsors are like at the end of the day trying to sell product so it's like really it's the number of eyeballs or the number number of impressions that that athlete makes right so like you know i could go win like a million races that are that don't have a lot of eyeballs on it and like a sponsor probably won't care so they incentivize us to do a race like utmb or something like that where if you win there's a lot of eyeballs on you and then like to be fair like the timing is super important like me or matt or whoever could go win utmb next year and potentially now i think there's a ton of eyeballs on it but like potentially we might not have as big of an impact as far as like following and people becoming fans of us and the brands that are sponsoring us as like certain years past um it's is is like i find it very confusing how like certain athletes are are very popular from the same results that maybe like other athletes have also gotten and and aren't as popular and therefore not compensated appropriately. So it is very confusing. And like, especially with like, without money coming from the races, without appearance fees, there's a little in appearance fees and like adequate prize money. There's like the, the real money driver is just like almost like a mark, like marketing impact. And, and yeah, winning UTMB is a great way to provide your sponsor a huge marketing impact. Um, but obviously like only one person can win UTMB in a year and that's, that's really hard. Um, so it, it's, it's a little confusing, like, like to the point with Matt was making, like, yeah, you can, you can place really well at a huge race and maybe your next year's contract is going to be a little bit higher. Um, but then it's like confusing because some people can sort of like seemingly be able to like skip a step by like also performing just as well as you did at the same certain race. And it's I'm like not like speaking relatable. specifically. What? It seems like it, it's like the people that are relatable or have a story or look. Yeah. And, you know, it, there's yeah. so many weird factors that go into it. Yeah. So like the compensation is like not, not so linear. Um mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I Wait, mean, the sport. The fact that we can't talk about our contracts technically yeah. without food <laughs> doesn't yeah. help because it's like I could like I know what like somebody like Hayden is making through people talking or in or you, but like we can't talk about it. And so when we try and negotiate our own contract, it's like yeah, yeah. it's just, it's it's just tough. crazy. It's tough. That's why I went and got. That's why like this year I got an agent is because he's allowed to talk about the money. Um, I was so, going to ask that is, is agency because we had um, a former, I guess, North face teammate of yours, Corey Waltering on mm -hmm. um, is agency becoming more popular now in this. I think I personally, I don't think it's necessary right now. I think that it's, it might help uh, push the, the compensation up for all the athletes. Um, because I, I think for for brands there's nowhere to hide when you're when there's somebody saying like yo this person's with like the same like same marketable stats is like making this much from another brand like you guys are actually behind the curve and so I think it helps I think it helps with competition like as far as like brands being like oh shoot like I need to pay more money if I want this level of athletes or I need to like tell my CFO that we need to like have a little bit bigger budget for athletes. Cause that's where the sport's going. Um, uh, but I don't think it's necessary. I don't think it's necessary at this point. Like if you're, if you're good enough and you're like racing really well, like you probably don't honestly, an agent might not help, but if you're, 
if you're like sort of like hopefully like as I am hopefully like kind of growing in the sport still I think it I think it made a big difference and also I'm terrible at negotiating my own contract so I can't I'm even like nego- I can't even it's negotiate very awkward. there's no way I can negotiate a contract so <laughs> yeah it's 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 terrible um you know not not fun but yeah I, I think I don't know probably depends who you are right. and and how good you are at like negotiating for yourself do you guys see maybe a pro circuit coming? So sort of like, we'll say golf. Like there's the PGA Tour, and then there's all these other events that they can go do, but they're kind of obligated to do, or they want to do. I don't know if they're obligated or not. But do you see a trail and ultra pro circuit that is just the elite of the elite? It's a 50-person field, and this is where all the money goes. Is that something that could potentially come about as sponsorship or increases? as cash flow to the sport increases uh, as a way to kind of make sure that certain athletes are, cause I mean, you could get that. Well, like we talked about Matt, when you popped off at black Canyon, I mean, not that no one knew who you were, but I mean, they called you Daniel Matthews. So <laughs> that one, that one volunteer did. Um, but so there is the chance that that random person just, has an A plus day and takes away that prize money from everyone. Is there something like that that you could see happening to make sure that professional athletes get the professional money, I guess? Hmm. That's a good question. I, I don't know. <laughs> um, is, is that, that something that you would be interested in if that was a thing? Yeah. I, I thought a lot about this, like uh, when I was running track, like having more of a professional track circuit, and I thought that that would serve a really good purpose. I don't know if we're quite there yet with with trail running, just because. Um, well, with ultra running in general, there's just there's so many variables. So you could have a guy who's like, not, quote unquote, doesn't have a professional card, but could just like, have a day and run amazing. And so, um, I and I would want that person to be rewarded, and and that's kind of like their opportunity to, be, to reach the professional level. And so. Um, like you said, like for me at Black Canyon that year was very much like that. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't know. I think, um, that's an interesting question. I don't know if we're going to get there anytime, like in the next decade, I think it's just such a new, it's still a pretty new sport. I think there's a lot of growing pains going on right now. And so, um, I think until we're at least over these growing pains, that's probably not going to happen. I think UTMB is kind of trying to do that with their, like, events and world series events and then having the championship EU team be and this and that but um that we're seeing that that's just been a disaster so i don't know yeah. good question <laughs> yeah. i i think i think we have like i think there is kind of an un an unofficial circuit you know like if you're an american like you're gonna like black canyon stacked like these golden ticket races are stacked right mm-hmm. and then like and then I'm sure there's there's that sort of the equivalent in Europe and and maybe some of these other um, countries and stuff. But and then and then eventually like everybody kind of comes together at like UTMB or states, which is kind of cool. I I do I do that's like my one thing that I do love about UTMB is that it does kind of, sometimes the first time that the Americans get to race the Euros because um, usually like a lot of times the Americans are on this like this. Un, unofficial circuit of elite races in the u.s and i don't know what the heck the euros are doing um but uh yeah it's kind of i kind of agree with matt like i don't think we'll see it get too specific like here's six races that you have to do. and like you know the world trail majors is trying with like their four or five or maybe it's six races now of like races you can do and two of them count but i think yeah i just think I like to what Matt said. It's like everybody has different skill sets, and you want to race different races. And like, you know, maybe so. Like, like if you're an American, like maybe you don't want to get in the states, and maybe like the fast hundred k is not your thing. So then you go race a race like Chuck Nut, which is almost always stacked. You go race Broken Arrow, which is almost always stacked. Speed Goat, almost always stacked. And then you know, and then you like you know if if you want to you go over to europe and race occ or cc or something over there if you're like into those mountain style races so 
Mm -hmm. I think, I think we already do have a set of races um, that are kind of that, that circuit. It's just like maybe slightly spread out based on who chooses to do what um, based on their skill set or their, you know, whether they want in the States or whatever. But uh, I mean, even more so now you're seeing these races just being so stacked. Like, like again, Black Canyon this year was nuts. Uh, Chucking up was super stacked. Um, Canyons is going to be super stacked this year. Um, yeah, it's just like, yeah, yeah, I don't know. But now, now what, what I think both Matt and I would definitely agree on is that if like these races are so stacked, they should also just let elites in. Like poor <laughs> Matt over here struggling to get in the in the canyons you know and it's like come on let him in he's got the score for, he's got the utmb index score to get in just <laughs> you're not not letting him in so well and you mentioned broken arrow which is on your calendar this year uh um, yeah. yeah 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 so what else is on your calendar this year uh let's see i'm going i'm going to canyon 50k because i have okay. to get in I, I i want my big goal for the end of the year is ccc or occ but probably ccc and then i still got to get in so i got to go get top 10 at canyons 50k um and then i'll probably do broken arrow i might do like a kindle mountain run and then i'm trying to get into sears and all but i don't know i don't think that's gonna happen because uh it's just really hard timing but then yeah ccc is kind of the the big one uh for for me yeah. um i i went there last year and felt like i had a little more to give so got it now and if, and if you want i can edit this question out are you over the grand Can or the canaria because i know you just had that and mm -hmm. it, it didn't end the way that you wanted yeah. it to um but yeah is oh hold on Thank you for that, Jason. I appreciate it. For whatever reason, it's whatever switched up. Whatever Mike it wanted to to pick on me. He asked, "Am I okay now?" No, you still sound you still sound kind of funky. Yeah. Okay, I thought that was just my headphones. Yeah, was, no, no, no. That's been <laughs> him. I've been, I've been I've been I've been trying to get him. I've been trying to message him left and right, like inconspicuously. I'm like down here doing this with my phone. So. No, no, well, no, is it's it, great. Is it I've already now? I've already checked with John sidebar, and I'm like, is that me? Is that him? My internet sucks. Is that him or is it me? Like I yeah, said, yeah. we're not professional here. So is it is it no. better now? It's yeah, you're good now. now. Okay, you're good you, now. Can, you kind of have no. you kind of have that like robot effect going, which is yeah. yeah. Cool. Cannot wait to edit that out. That is gonna be awesome. So... <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. I think you just leave it. Oh well, hey, most of the time I do because most of the time, I so I do bedtime for my family every night. It's my time to shine. Like I, my wife is much better mm -hmm. in the morning than I am. So most of the time I just throw it up and say, "Oh hell with it. It'll be Love okay." It. So, Love it. Yeah. Um. But yeah. So. You had Canaria, and it didn't yeah. end the way that you had hoped that it would. Uh, and I kind of ha have a, a follow up to that. Is that because it was a a midnight or an overnight start? Yeah. Um, and how would you change that? Because I'm looking at, and it's kind of in our neck of the woods. Uh, mm -hmm. There's the in the heat of the night, 50k and 100k down in Alabama, and that's a 6 p.m. start. So I'm also kind of picking your huh. brain on how I should. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. How I should tackle I that. No. Yeah, I, I don't know. Um, it's hard to say that the I mean, yeah, the, the race did not go uh well at all. Um, but it's hard it's hard to say like like I like I could just being very could be being very self biased and thinking that like the, the midnight start was a factor. Like but I mean everybody else had to deal with it. So I, I you know, it's like I don't know, am I just like that much worse at not getting sleep which i notably am very bad when i don't get sleep like like just like a grumpy person but um it's like uh yeah it's interesting that that race like i dropped out um and like my wife is driving me back us back to the hotel and like i was hardly able to stay awake just sitting in the car like mm -hmm. and it was you know it would have been, you know, like 
if I had kept going, I would have still had like seven hours of running to go, you know, it's like, I just don't like, it didn't compute to me. And, you know, a lot of things like, like with that midnight start, I like forgot my bib to the start start line. And like, I had to like find some, some like sweet people at the, at the start line, like got me a bib. And then like, we couldn't find safety pins. Cause I don't really like in Europe, it's like actually quite hard. They don't often give you safety pins with your bib. Um, so if you're racing in Europe, bring safety pins. Um, but these, this girl was like literally taking off her earring to like pin it on my shirt. And then somebody found zip ties. No. So zip tied it. Um, but, uh, yeah, it was, I don't know the, the midnight, the midnight starts hard. I've done a 3 a.m. Start and that race went very well. Um, a 6 p.m. Start. I don't know. It's hard. If, uh, I think a 6 p.m. Start would be fine for like, at least for, for me for like 50 K. Cause mm-hmm. You're still kind of within that waking hour, you know, maybe you're finishing like a little bit past your normal bedtime. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's, I mean, you know, leave it up to Alabama to do something. Right. 100K (laughs) that's only in the night, you know, like (laughs) sounds terrible. And it's in August Uh, too. So it's going to be grueling hot no matter what time of day it is because, you know, it's the South. So yeah, it'll just be like more muggy at night. (laughs) Um. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I so that's the thing. I tried to sleep a ton the day of, or like that. Yeah, I guess the day of or the day before. Um, I could not go to sleep, and it was just like it was just weird. It was just weird. I I was not vibing with the the midnight start thing, but you know, every everybody else. Well, not everybody. A lot of other people seem to have no problem with it. So I don't know. Well, and so you mentioned that you dropped, you mentioned you forgot your bib. You are in elite company here when it comes to dropouts and forgetting things. John yeah, yeah. went to a race. John, what did you leave in your house? <laughs> I, I left my pack there with a couple of <laughs> items. <laughs> um, so his whole pack he left in North Carolina. He's going to, this was uh, Hellbender a couple years ago. Thankfully, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah thankfully jason was there i was there we had another friend will who was there i was like look we've all got our bags you've got a bag just fine like you just got to mentally shug and shake this off uh but hey at least you didn't leave your pack at, at yeah the place. You know, just your i bed, mean that would so. <laughs> i mean <laughs> yeah it was, it was so bad i it's the worst feeling when you get there and you're like are you kidding me you know yeah, like but, it, um, it, yeah what happened to me was i had all my stuff laid out on the bed I loaded it all into my car. My pack was the last thing. And I turned around and I looked at the bed. I made the bed. So I hung up my pack on like the wall and then mm. I left it. So the point here is don't make your bed. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Didn't realize it until I was uh, about 30 minutes away from where we were staying. And it was like a three and a half hour drive. So it was, it was too late at that point. But... Oh, that's so bad. Well, and you you kind of know the area. He, so he had his in reach in there, and we were kind of hoping that he would have that because it's yeah. you know along the Black Crest Trail or whatever it is, and there's very, no cell service. Very remote and, course. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so Matt, so we've kind of talked about you know what Seth has coming this year. You necessarily don't have these necessities that you have to get done, or these I don't want to say necessities. You're not. You don't have obligations. Yeah. to go do abc race um how are you navigating this new world of unsponsorship non-sponsorship uh and is that giving you certain freedoms to pick what races you want what races do you have coming up i know you love the grassroots uh yeah. and you're absolutely slaying these races that you go to you just uh to, was it third at alta uh mm-hmm. second at chuck um and there was a reel that I saw. You had like this Formula One pit stop. Like you just threw a <laughs> threw a uh, bottle and you got tossed one and you were gone. Like it was like, I was like, good lord, that reminds me of the time he flew past me going into the finish line of Black Canyon, like just flying. Um, yeah. So how are you kind of navigating this this new world for you? Yeah, it's 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 been really interesting. Um, I'm it's I'm kind of riding this fine line, right? Like. I'm enjoying the freedom right now while I have it to to do races that I I want to do and I've always w- wanted to do in, in my career. Um, maybe maybe there wasn't a whole lot of incentives to do them before, and I'm finally in a position where it's like, sweet, I can go do it now. Um, but at the same time, I, I also like I'm unsponsored, and um, 
racing a lot all over gets pretty expensive and I feel like I've put in a lot of work to be a sponsored athlete and so it's like I gotta um also find these races and and run races where I'm gonna start you know getting a little bit more noticed in racing competition luckily the the races the grassroots races I have run have had some of the best runners in the world at them but um you know moving forward I got to find races where there's going to be really good competition and um and all, like Seth was saying earlier where all the eyeballs are on so um yeah so right now I'm I'm kind of just trying to I'm enjoying the yeah enjoying the freedom it's cleared up a lot of mental space but I'm also um a little bit anxious to try and like um yeah get with a company that that wants to support me and that I can um be a part of and and yeah do the thing of being a sponsored athlete again I I miss it I mean that's what we work so hard to do and so um yeah so like with my schedule for the rest of the year it's it's pretty it's clear in a sense I have an idea of what I want to do but a lot's going to depend on if I get into canyons or or not um and then um if I, if I do get into canyons and I get that top two, then obviously I'd go back to Western States. And I stated before, that's my only reason for wanting to do canyons this year. I, I'm not really, I've been um, out to Chamonix the last few years and um, I'd love to go back out this year, but um, it, it's an expensive trip and I, I'm good with staying around here and running, running more local this year. Um, Leadville's kind of been on my mind. I not super stoked about running at 12,000 feet, but it's a, it's a course that I think I would do really well on, uh, minus the altitude and, and that course record is something I really want to, want to chase. Uh, it's Matt Carpenter's record. So it's been there forever. And, um, I think that that, that could be fun. There's a lot of good guys around here. Um, I ain't not race too. And so, yeah, it, uh, kind of a wide open year, uh, just gonna play it by ear. I'll, I'll be at Canyons and Gorge. 100k i'll be at both races um whether i run both of them or not i don't know but uh that's kind of the plan right now but yeah just trying to pick up a sponsorship <laughs> so seth would you agree with me in saying that this early part of this year has been the resurgence of matt daniels because it sure sure as hell feels like it's been the resurgence of matt daniels at least from from the spectator standpoint because you you kind of disappeared for a year or two you know you just kind of yeah. you started you you stepped away from the hundred mile distance. Was there a reason why you started to focus on the short stuff? Were you trying to get that speed back and then kind of build back up and then bam, take the world by storm like you are right now? Yeah, gosh, that's a good question. Um, yeah, I feel like, well, so the last few years have just been crazy with, uh, I, I had an injury that just, I couldn't figure it out for a year. And then once I like, had surgery and got it cleared up it took a whole nother year of kind of coming back but during that year i was worried about sponsorship and losing my contract and mental state wasn't good and so it was just a lot of just kind of beating my head against the wall last year like i'd have a couple good performances and some low-key races and then totally unravel on the races that mattered and so um i decided like at the beginning of the year yeah i was gonna like start the season off with some 50 Ks. I love the distance. It's, it's fun. You can just go rip. And, and the thing with 50 Ks is you can train right through them. And so I've been keeping mileage high and training, trying to train right through these races, uh, to build up to hopefully really be in good kind of long distance form, uh, later this summer and, and knock off a good hundred miler. Um, but yeah, that was, it was a little strategic in that sense. I think <laughs> it's just so happy. I don't like to race super long early in the year. I don't think it serves a good purpose when you're trying to peak in like, you know, July or August. So sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, no, it's definitely been it's definitely been a fun, fun spring to spectate. I mean, like we always joke, but it's actually just true. Like he's hundred percent holding it down for the Boulder Boys. Like <laughs> me and Adam dropped out. Like Drew Drew got fourth, which is pretty good. Uh Moy had his like first little taste of of uh cramping and bonking in the hills or uh around the bay so uh yeah it's been it's been cool like yeah I don't know I mean yeah it's 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 like hard like it's uh I always tell Matt he needs to just like run Sears and all and fast stuff because he's so freaking fast but you know he he like want he likes the the 100 milers and like yeah if you like if you like doing something it's like and he's obviously been successful at them so yeah I mean kind of do whatever he wants like yeah. I mean, I, I mean, it's like the, like, I don't think, I think all of us have been dropped by Matt um, in any 
distance, like late in a ra- late in a long run or early in a long run, doesn't really matter. So, yeah, it's fun. It's fun. I'm excited to see what he gets into though, because it's like, it's a little frustrating not seeing canyons let him in, and then, and then it's like, kind of like, oh man, like, yeah, just like, what's he gonna do? Mm-hmm. So it's fun to watch. So- so, so, so the overarching theme to this is somebody please sponsor this guy. I mean, come on, what are you doing? I mean, what's he got to show some leg? I mean, what's he got to do to get, yeah. get? I mean, come on, guys. I mean, yeah, we got the real freaking deal here. Throw this yeah. man a contract. Let's get him in some. Let's let's get him. You know, let's get him in. Let's get him in some shoes. Let's get him in some nice shorts, a nice looking bag, a hat or something. Mm-hmm. Let's get That's him in some. So we yeah, we all let's go and see if they're offering sponsorships now. <laughs> yeah, we all we all know uh, Matt's got Matt's got a lot of leg to show. So there you go. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, I yeah, for real. <laughs> so when you guys do your training runs, I know that you guys are all doing different races. You've all got your own plans. Some of you are coached, some of you aren't. So you guys are kind of you. You well, you talked about that in an episode. Um, does it ever get a little competitive? on a long run where someone may be having like, it's a speed day for him or a tempo day. And you're like, God, man, he's really going to pull away. Uh, uh-uh, Not today. Ego's getting in the way of this one. Mm-hmm. Does it ever get a little competitive out there? Or do you ever say to hell with the training plan? I'm keeping up today. Is it- uh, yeah. We don't, we don't do too many hard workouts together. No. Yeah. Well, and that's one thing, like, I think this is the reason why we connected all like, and became the Boulder boys to begin with was when we were running all together, like the egos were just like out the window. They were, they weren't existing on the trail, which was really interesting. Cause especially in Boulder, if you run with literally anybody else outside of our little friend group there, it's all of a sudden a pissing match and everybody's like trying to drop, you know, it, you're flexing on everybody. And that's just how it goes without even trying like that just is what happens. And so that has kind of been the interesting thing with us is like, we we usually just get caught up in conversation and then like i guess i guess like some of us are better at climbing or descending than the other but it's it's always like we acknowledge that and uh like if we're running up green like maybe some of us will like get to the top quicker if we're feeling good but like it's kind of an unspoken like no big deal catch you at the top and then you'll see adam at the bottom just flying down because he's such a good downhill yeah most of the time most of the time it's just, we just run together and whatever pace suits everybody in that moment is kind of what we're doing. So, yeah. yeah. Good. So, so actually I feel like this is a good story because uh, I don't know if we talked about it on the pod. So Moy, Moises moved here. I don't know. I forgot like in December and we were like, like he, he immediately like clicked like with like uh, just like in the, the group of friends and um but and you know we were just kind of like we were kind of like giving a hard time like oh you're not a boulder boy yet kind of thing and um and then we we came up with this thing that was like like one of the tests or i think matt you either matt or adam or both you guys came up with like you have to be able to get dropped like to be dropped by the people you're running with and to drop the people you're running with and like how you act in both those circumstances is like whether we're like we want to, you know like you're like like chill to run with us all the time and like I mean we we'll run with like to be fair we'll run with anybody like anybody but like this is kind of the thing and like that's the sweet thing about the group is like yeah it's just like I've been dropped by every single one of those people and I think I've dropped everybody that like at a different at different points and like it's kind of just like no big deal you know like like Mm -hmm. both both things are fine and we just like move on and it's fun we like keep talking and have a good good rest of the run um but yeah no it doesn't i don't think it ever gets competitive it only gets a little spicy if like someone we've never ran with comes into the circle and then sometimes we're like all right like uh that has happened like once or twice (laughs) well that wouldn't happen with either of the three of us so we'd just be like oh cool you guys are going a whole lot faster than we're capable of we'll just catch you for beers afterwards so yeah any anytime you want to come to boulder and run with us feel free 
Well, so oddly so enough, good. I'm actually looking at a race in Colorado next year. Um, and I think I may, I've got a Southwest voucher I've got to use. Otherwise it, it, it expires. Uh, and so I'm thinking about doing, is it, you guys are, are they Coloradans? Is that what you guys call yourselves? Coloradoans? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. People, I don't know. People from Colorado. So yeah. is no. it, <laughs> is it Ure or Urai? There by Telluride. Ure. I'm gonna, Ure, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So there's a hundred okay. there. And I'm yep. thinking about doing yeah. that one next Oof. year. That'd and, be, yeah. That'd and be I beautiful. need the whole year to get ready for it. So, yeah. yeah. And wait, wh where are you coming from? Nashville. So okay, you're in Nashville. Yeah, yeah, there's a there's a lot. There's not uh no, there's nothing here. You can say it. It's yeah, fine. I guess, yeah, it's I'd fine. have to go we, I'd have to go we, hang out with John over in Knoxville uh yeah, for multiple say, weekends to get used I'll to just, that. So um, a, Yeah, and that's why I would need the whole year. I mean yeah. forty one thousand feet of just climbing alone. That's yeah, that's a lot of climbing. So that is a lot of climbing. I mean if it, it, it's that area is like the my opinion like the prettiest part of colorado like the san juan's down there so uh i think i think even if you're like having a terrible time and suffering you're gonna like enjoy it i mean it's at least it's so. gonna look pretty to it's at least it's gonna be pretty to look at while i'm suffering exactly you know? yeah, yeah, yeah 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 and what is it a 52 hour cutoff i think for that i might need all 52 of mm. that so, like, that's that's a long time to be moving so that's a long time yeah yeah um but yeah, so sweet. yeah, so I guess in closing, um, what else? What else is out there for you guys? Like you, you've achieved the peak of the sport. Where do you go from here? Like, what what's the next peak? Because I've I've always I heard it in a business podcast. Like when you reach a peak, you always look for that next peak because uh, you're never at the top like there's always something that could be better so what's the next peak for you guys what would yeah. be like you know so you've got utmb that you kind of want to or states i guess for you matt like that's your thing so but looking long term what's your what's your goals here like what, yeah. what's the next peak i mean i feel like i feel like matt might have a different answer i mean actually probably the same answer in in, in a lot of ways um i feel like it's funny, like being sponsored was like the peak for so long, you know, mm -hmm. like when I was unsponsored and uh, just wanting to be a professional athlete. And then I get here and I'm like, oh, actually, like this is where it actually is really hard. Like, cause now it's like you're fighting. It, it, feel, it feels like every race is like a chance to either like move up and like actually, cause like I, I have not achieved the peak of what a professional trail runner can be or what I think I'm capable of so like every race it's like okay like this is either a step for me to like actualize my goal of of like winning race and just being like a better athlete or the athlete I think I can be or it's like a chance to completely bomb it and like become unsponsored and like potentially the dream's over right and so like what makes it what I feel like Matt is like what's so like cool about what Matt's doing right now is like he kind of like had that right like he like and Matt you can speak to it like and now you're like not sponsored but he's like actually like coming around and like crushing so I don't I don't know but so for me it's like the peak is always just like becoming like there's an athlete that I think I can be and and then like that's just like what like every day of training is is for and then every races for but it's it's like i feel like the hard work is like what i thought was a peak before is actually just like a false summit you know mm -hmm. um i don't know i don't know about yeah i i mean I, I i'm with you seth i think um running for me is kind of it's it's been i guess kind of my life's work like i started at a really young age and uh from when i was 11 i just kind of dropped everything i did in life and focused on being a really good runner and that's the distance has changed and the events have changed throughout all the years, but that's kind of been, I mean, pretty much been my like identity. I've been a runner my whole life. And so um, I think as long as I can keep getting a lot out of myself and it keeps and I'm, and I'm happy about it and enjoying it. Um, I kind of want to keep seeing how, how good I can get while I'm doing that. I think that's, that's, I don't know if there's, 
a peak. I think there's a point where you just start, um, you turn around and go back down the mountain and you're doing it for enjoyment, but you're not like chasing certain um, performance metrics and that sort of thing. I think trying, I think the big thing is once you reach professional running and uh, you do get to do it at a really high level and you're racing guys that are the, the absolute best in the sport, like, you know, Killian or Jim or even Courtney for that matter. Once you kind of get to that point, it, it's like, yeah, I want to get to that, but I'm also, I'm, I'm kind of here and I'm good with that, but I want to see like, can I continue to get better and what kind of legacy can I leave for myself? Like, can I die happy with what I, I went for? And that's kind of where I'm at right now. It's like, I'm unsponsored. Like I would love to be sponsored again. Cause it, you know, it's nice being uh, compensated for hard work, but at the same time, it's like, I, I, I love this so much. And so I think um, being able to continue to do that in a healthy way and, um, and enjoy it and, and not take away from other aspects of life. And, you know, uh, that's, I'd like to just continue doing that. So, yeah. Good, good deal. So I know I dominated the whole conversation, but uh, I look, I was geeked when Matt, you said that you and Saz would come on. I was like, hell yeah, we made it. So like, <laughs> so I'll turn it over. I know John, uh, Seth, whenever we see you on a race list, like you're always one of our top people that we root for. Like we have our little side chat and John and I'm like, dude, Seth's going to crush this race. Seth's going to crush That's this amazing. race. So yeah. Um, so John, do you have any questions before I uh, before I let these boys go back to their families? No. I'll ask Seth one one quick question. So uh, we all live in Tennessee. Uh, we all love our East Coast trail running. Um, love it down here. Um, obviously, you lived in Chattanooga for a while. Um, let's say you come back in town for like a week. Where's your go-to place you're going to go run? Just either in Chattanooga or the Southeast or anywhere around here. Oh yeah, I mean, if I yeah, if I'm going to Chattanooga, I'm I'm running on the trails on Lookout Mountain, like Guild Trail or whatever. Um, Big that's Daddy. like my go-to. Big Daddy, Big Daddy Luke. Luke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big Daddy. Um, <laughs> love it. I actually, did did that. Um, uh, like last time I was in Chattanooga, um, like the first day. Actually, there's been a few times we've driven in and like before we see the family, we like stop at the trail and go for a run me me and my wife um but uh i mean east coast is crazy like i actually like some of my favorite trails are um like i i went to school at east utsu in johnson city for a year and a half and like i love the pinnacle mountain trail up there like um buffalo mountain trails up there a little bit of a drive roan mountain i don't know they're so good they're so good and then there's you know the stuff like near pisgah or uh, Brevard, it's all so good. I I have a hard time just picking one, but um, yeah. I mean, and and actually, like a trip to, I keep thinking about it because like I go back to Chattanooga maybe once or twice a year and, and run, but a trip to um, like I keep thinking like oh, I really want to take a trip back to like Asheville and and like do like the Art Lobe Trail and stuff um, again. I've only done it once and it was so cool you know there's a race that kind of goes around in that area called hellbender 100 you should probably i've heard of it i've heard of it the 100 <laughs> the 100 part is is really keeping me away from it oh well, they have well, the it's... um they have the uh, heartbreaker 50 mile and 55k they actually just had it this weekend so it's the oh, short really? race yeah oh sick it's pretty, it's pretty dope i think the 50 mile has about 11 or twelve thousand feet of elevation gain so it's pretty legit <laughs> I believe it, man. I, I always say this, like, I don't know why, or I always wish like, um, one race in the East coast would just be like, for like getting money, paying the pros to come and see what happens. Cause like, I mean, I guess they tried that with you rock, didn't they? Yeah, uh, and, uh, I think and, and, and the grand stones kind of head in that direction with the, with UTMB that's park. right that's so. right yeah i keep forgetting about grindstone i i uh i need to come out and do that one sometime yep. keep forgetting about that jason you have any closing I, I have i have i have a hot take question for matt <laughs> i'm gonna put him on the spot so <laughs> okay hold john on. So and i john take. and i Here, john and thing. i got john and i got into a debate last week <laughs> well not last week two days ago <laughs> we did our barkley episode 
So, ultra running performance of the year mm. from a female standpoint, would you think it would be Camille Heron's sixth day or Jasmine's Barkley finish? Yeah, I actually was I was just thinking about this this morning, uh, which is funny. That wait, <laughs> wait, wait, Matt, would you also add in because there's a third Courtney's Western States? Well, OK, because I know uh, I know you are losing your I, mind I, at that. Yeah, OK. I think that's the most I think Courtney's Western States is the most incredible ultra performance ever all time in the story i think but this year this year we're not talking about we're not okay, talking about okay, that we're year, talking about just yeah. this, this year yeah. so this year um okay that's how impressive well, it was we're so, still bringing it up so, yeah. Ja- yeah. <laughs> yeah um so jasmine's race at bark or run at barkley i can't even well i can't comprehend what camille did either but i really cannot comprehend what went on at barkley like it's just otherworldly to me what those athletes do like i i don't know i don't even know i can't even go there in in my thought process i'm like i would never even try to sign up for that race because i would just like (laughs) like the cigarette lights and i would literally be like trying to smell the smoke like or like to figure out where i'm going i have no clue i'm so bad navigating. so that is really really impressive to me um they're both incredible like like what camille did was again uncomprehendable just so fast for so long i i have a hot take on that i think camille could have actually run a lot better i think she could have run even further and even faster Uh, i don't think she had the full she ran incredible but i don't think she had the full six day experience that she was hoping for i think she could have broken even more records um so because of that i think jasmine's is right now the performance of the year but i'm a i'm a purist when it comes to like running and running fast and so i'm i'm all about what camille did so dude my hot take is i don't have one <laughs> yeah <laughs> you, you know what you know what you, you answered it because john and i went back and forth for forever yeah. because because we feel like that six day event is 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 quite possibly one of the hardest events you could you could do right if it's done right and if you, you know, if you really just have the perfect day, um, like you could really like drop some cra- like, like a crazy ass number on the board if you do it. And I mean, she broke like 12 world records, I think, or something stupid like that. Um, but again, what Jasmine did at Frozen Head, um, um, a couple of us have been out there before and it is just it's it's like a whole other world it's like going into like a whole other it's like you've stepped into a place that like isn't real um and i couldn't imagine like having to to get through to that place on my own mm-hmm. yeah. but that helped. i think let alone it, finding books along the way and ripping yeah. pages out you know <laughs> but the fact that we're talking about i it, it i'm it's just the last two years of women's ultra running has just been the coolest thing to follow and to see the growth has been incredible. And the fact that we're talking about like, for me, those right, like this year so far, those are the two most incredible performances across the board in any race that's happened this year. And so, and the fact that we're talking about two women is really cool. Um, yeah. So yeah, I don't like, they're both uncomprehendable. I think if anything, I would love to study the minds of, of the two of both of those women, like it, from a physiological standpoint, awesome. Like you accomplished a lot, but like what they had to go through mentally <laughs> for them is just on another level. And that's where I'm, I'm really hung up. It's like, how do you go there? So oh, yeah, yeah, that's kind of like what I said, like just running like a hundred mile or like overnight, that's taken me some to some mild places mentally. I couldn't yeah. imagine that for like, you know, six days straight, like, man, there's no telling where they went. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, that's it, Garrett. I'm done. <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I wanted to put it. I, I wanted John and I went back and forth for forever, and I'm like, you know what? Damn it! I'm going to ask an expert. We have an expert witness on the show. <laughs> we'll go straight to the expert. So, well, so since you gave him a, a chance, so Seth, we do. We typically do hot takes, which is mm-hmm. something controversial, if you will. Doesn't have to be running related. Uh, it could be anything. Uh, do you have any particular hot takes that you would like to share? Like- I feel like I always have a hot take, but I don't know if I have one on the spot like this. 
No. Okay. Um, well, I'll give you, I'll give you time to think. Cause I'm going to piss John off here. Um, <laughs> while we're talking about Barkley, <sighs> Barkley to me, while it is trail running to me, it is more orienteering and wayfinding than it is trail running. I agree. Now, yeah, I agree. do you still have to bust it and haul ass? Absolutely. But I got to carry a map. I got to carry a compass. I got to find my spot. I got to rip this fucking page book out. <laughs> like, it's to me, it's now, is it any less impressive? Absolutely not. And I would never even try like you. I would never try to sign up for that because I don't even like it. No, mm -mm, I'm good. I'm hey, good. Christoph, you don't even know how to sign up for it. Well, that's true. Yeah. That's true. And I'll never know how to sign up for it because, like, <laughs> isn't the the hardest part about Barclays is like getting into it? Getting yeah. Into yeah. It. Like, or the yeah. second hardest part, I guess, other yeah. than finishing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Pretty Dude, much well, all his events have turned into like super ultra elite um, entries. Well, hey, anyway. so Matt, you can come and do because this would kind of fall into your wheelhouse. And there's some significant is the is the prize money still there, John? For what? Strolling gym? No, it's For gone. Strolling gym? Oh, it's gone. Gym. Oh, that, yeah. that oh, even okay. Money? Okay. So yeah. Matt, do you know anything about strolling gym? Have you ever Yeah, I had I had my eye on that um for a few years. Like that was one of I wanted to do that. I would I would have loved to have gone to Tunnel Hill and like try and had a crack at the the American records before they got really fast and now I have entire <laughs> that 50 like, mile got demolished. Oh, it's crazy. And I bet he, he back here in Boulder and it was see him running around the res and it's just like those days are long gone for me. Like <laughs> yeah, he, he's he's proper fast. Yeah. Yeah. Um but yeah maybe maybe one day I would love to do that. Um Ultra Trail Bus on out in Sweden's another one that's kind of that like flatter, faster race I would love to do and I'm going to have to, I mean, I'm, I turn 36 next month, so I don't have the wheels for too much longer. I'm going to have to get in these races while I can. So yeah, maybe you'll see me out there sooner than later. Well, there you go. If either of you, <laughs> Seth, if you come back, Matt, if you ever find your way to Tennessee or the Southeast, we'll be there with, uh, with pom poms and bells on. And if you guys need some crew to come with you, uh, well, God damn it. I can make some good quesadillas. If, if that's your <laughs> thing. <it>. So, <laughs> so <laughs> With that being said, if you guys have not, for whatever reason, been living under a rock for the past two months, not checked out the Boulder Boys and their show, do yourself a favor. It is top-notch stuff. Whatever you guys are doing, keep it going because it's absolutely fantastic. Uh, we kind of started out as a banter show. We're kind of going to maybe talk about drifting back to it. The banter is great. And, and like I said earlier, the camaraderie that you guys have, you can you can hear it and you can smell it through the speakers so kudos to you guys and with all that being said thanks for hanging out with us thanks for hanging out with the back of the packers on something that's not a race so uh but yeah yeah, yeah. until next yeah, time guys thank you so much yeah yeah absolutely you guys always have a mic if you ever want to come and give a hot take we'll oh, we will dish Love out it. your hot takes so <laughs> whatever it is so oh, um good. even if it's baja blast is overrated you can make that a hot take and we will argue with it if we if <laughs> if you want to have something to talk about that no. is truth that is not a hot take that's a truth <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I agree so all right guys we will catch you on the next episode have yourself a good time and be safe out there all right thank you